Okay. Sounds good to me. All right, you guys. Well, what we're going to work on today is let's run through how to do all of your invoicing, how to take different types of payment. Um, we'll run through lots of different payment scenarios together, make sure we're all on the same page and you guys feel comfortable since this is going to be one of the things that you guys are doing continuously day after day after day. Um, so I believe last time Beth got through how to add things into medical history. Um, because at every visit, you're going to have something added into the medical record, whether it is an exam or medication, um, procedures that they're having. And whatever is in their medical history is what you create an invoice for. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple things into medical history here so that we've got something to create an invoice for. So I'm going to right click from medical history and I'm going to go to choose. This should be what you guys did last time, but we'll kind of refresh over it to you. And we're going to go to treatments. That should open up your treatment list. That way we can pick all the things that we need to go into the medical record and that we need to create that invoice for. So we'll just say that during today, during the visit, we had an exam and some blood work. So I'm just going to use my find field here and type in exam. And we'll use this one here, the physical office visit. I'm going to click on that so that it places it underneath my selected. And then I'm going to take my find field and clear that off. And then let's also find some blood work. And we'll use this one here. All right, so now I've got everything selected that I need to go into medical history. All I have to do is make sure I've got my doctor selected. And then I'm going to click Done. Those should go into medical history in blue. And if you guys remember from last time, something in medical history in blue means that it's not been sent through to accounting yet. So basically, a blue medical record means that you're not finished yet. You can still make changes. So if you needed to make an adjustment to something, we still could at this point because we've not finalized it and invoiced it yet. But we're going to say that all this is perfect. This is everything that we needed in medical history. And at this point, we've got the customer, they're standing up front, and they are ready to pay and go home. So we are going to create an invoice. Couple different ways you can do it. Uh, first way, and I think this is my personal preference, just because I'm a visual person and I like to see my options. But if you right click in medical history, you've got an option right here for post and it states right next to it, create invoice. But if you're a keyboard person, you prefer to do that, um, you can see that your keyboard function is the F8 key. Or another option you have, if you want to, up here at the very top, this little dollar sign with the plus sign, that is your posting button. So right click post, F8 or the little picture button will all take you to the same spot. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to post. And you should always get this posting charges window. Um, it's always a good idea to triple check that this window is correct. Are correct. Um, reason I say that is this posting date right here, it pulls from the computer day. Now, 99.9% .9 of the time, that's going to be accurate, um, which you want that to be today's date because that's the date that your entries are going to go into accounting for. Now, we all know how computers are. Sometimes they have a mind of their own. So tomorrow you might open up your computer, not Avamark, but the computer itself, and the computer decides that it's now um, November of 2022. Now, if you don't triple check that, you could post everything in Avamark for 2022 instead of 2016. Usually you don't see it until it's the end of the day and you go to print off like your end of day reports, your deposit slips, things like that, and they're all blank because there's nothing in accounting for 2016 on today's date. So I always like to make sure everybody knows it is important when you go to post and create an invoice, just glance up here and make sure that it is right. Like I said, 99.9% .9 of the time, it should be right, but in that off situation that it's not, 
let's just get in the habit of triple checking that. All right, so with all that big spiel, the only thing you have to do with this window is click post at the bottom. When you do that, it's going to automatically bring open an invoice and a payment window for you. Now, like I said, we're going to go through a lot of different payment type scenarios together. Um, but for this first one, we'll leave it plain and simple. We're just going to say it's the perfect world. We've got the perfect client. And they're going to pay every bit in cash. So all that we would have to do is right here, you've got this type field. And you've got a drop down. So you should have all sorts of different payment methods here. Anything from check, cash, all your different credit cards. Um, you've even got a held check option if you guys take held check payments. But we're going to say that this one here is a cash payment. And it should default right here in the amount field to the amount of this particular invoice. So we should be good there. So all I would have to do is click Done. I've got my type of payment, and I've got the correct amount. So I'm going to click Done here. I'll turn this error message off. All this is saying is, do you guys have like a physical cash drawer that plugs into your computer? No, we do not. OK. We, this is. Be, I'm sorry, sir. We will be switching to McAllister Payment Solutions when we go live. Oh, awesome. OK. So that'll, that'll take into effect when you do like um, credit card transactions. So. Um, but I'll turn this message off because all it's saying is I put in a cash payment and uh, it's looking for a cash drawer. So I'm just going to click OK. So now we've got your invoice. We've got the cash payment that was on there. Um, you can see all the entries. At this point, what you guys would be doing is clicking print. That is going to print off a copy for the customer. And it's going to close this invoice so that the next time that the customer comes in, they've got a brand new blank invoice that they're working off of. Um, however, I'm going to preview print it real quick so you guys can see what it looks like. Now, a lot of this, too, is customizable. So if you're looking at this, you're like, oh, that's not quite how we'd want our invoice laid out. There are some adjustments that we can make, so kind of keep that in mind. But uh, it should have your clinic information at the top customer's information directly below. And then here you can see divided out is all the entries per category. That's something we can adjust if you don't like that. Um, but then it shows how much their total was, what they made in payments, and then what their balance is. Any questions with that? Nope. Nope. All right. Let me close out of there. Now, like I said, when you guys click print, that's going to print the copy, and it's going to close the invoice. Not just physically close it, but actually close that invoice so the next time that Andy comes in, he's got a, a new invoice we're working off of. Um, I'm not going to waste any of your paper, so I'm just going to click close. That just closes it without printing it. And you'll, you'll notice now that all those entries that were blue in medical history are now in black because that means that they've been finalized. They've been sent through to accounting. They've been paid for. We're good. All right. We're going to do another scenario. Um, let me put some more things into medical history so we've got something to invoice for. So I'm going to go ahead and do my choose again. Let's see. What do we want to do now? Let's do, let's see what you got in dental. Let's extract some teeth here. Oh, that was a zero charge. That's all right. OK, so we've got a couple things of medical history. We're going to invoice. So I'm going to right click, and we'll go to post. Remember, at this window, we're triple checking our dates good, which it is. So I'm going to click post here. So now we've got a total of $76.50. let us say that the customer is going to pay with multiple types of payment. They've got cash and a credit card, or they've got cash and a check, or they got check and a credit card. Honestly, the combination of what they're using, it doesn't really matter because the steps that you're going to walk through is always going to be the same. So what you're going to do if they have multiple types of payment, you're going to select your first payment type. So whatever payment method that they want to give you first. Um, are you guys taking check payments there at the clinic? No, not really. OK, so mostly mostly just cash and credit card? Yeah, very few kind of like legacy clients will pay by check. OK, 
All right, so we'll kind of focus on cash and credit card then. Okay. All right, so we'll say that the first payment type is they've got $20 in cash, and then they want to run a card for the rest. So I'm just going to use my type drop down and select the first type of payment that they're physically giving me. So we've got cash payment. And then all you're going to do is just clear out here what's in the amount field and type in how much they're giving you of that particular type of payment. So we've got cash payment for 20. I'm going to go ahead and click done. So that's going to list off the cash payment here. And you can see it deducts down their balance to now being 5650. But at this point, we still need to add that second type of payment. So what you guys are going to do is just anywhere within this window here, you're going to do a right click and you're going to go to new. And that's going to list off all your payment types again. So now we can grab that second type of payment. So we'll say it is a MasterCard. That's going to pop back open the payment window. MasterCard's already selected. It's got the remaining balance there. And then I'm going to click done. So now we got both payment types listed. Our balance is at zero. And we can print off our copy for the customer. You guys feel pretty good with that? Yep. Yep. All right. Moving right along. I'm going to go ahead and close this one. All right. Let me put some more stuff in so we can invoice. Let's grab. We'll do some grooming services now. Oh, we've only got grooming teeth and nails. We'll do those. All right. So this looks good. I'm going to invoice. We'll do a right-click post. We'll post here. All right, so this time we got a $15 balance. Let's say that the customer is going to give us more money than what the balance is. So we'll say that all they have on hand is a $50 bill, okay, or a $100 bill, whatever they have on hand. So I'm going to use my type drop down again and select the type of payment they're giving me. <laughs> And then in the amount field, let's clear this out and put in exactly how much they're giving us. And then we're going to click done. It should always automatically open up a change maker window. So basically just telling us, hey, you've got a $50 balance. You should be giving them back $85. Now at this window, you're going to have two options. You've got to continue and you've got to cancel. If I click continue, that is me telling Avamark that yes, I did get into my cash drawer, I got out $85 and I handed it back to the customer. That evens out the balance, everything is done and we're all evened out and done, okay? However, you do have the option of clicking cancel. When you click cancel, that is actually you saying no, you did not give $85 back to the customer. And it actually applies that $85 as a credit onto the customer's file so that they would have $85 sitting there that they can have that gets deducted from their next balance. I'm actually going to click continue. Let's give them their money back. I'll show you what that looks like. So on their invoice, you're going to see the original cash payment. You gave them back $85 and their balance is at zero. All right, let me go ahead and close this one. As far as taking different types of payments, um, do you guys have any scenarios that you guys want me to walk through that I didn't grab there? Um, multiple pets. Okay. Um, so if you have multiple pets, so we've got, um, let me add something here real quick. Let me just grab something. Um, let me grab dental again. All right, so we've got something on this pet, and then I'm going to click on the additional patient tab down here at the bottom. And then I'm going to right click in medical history. Let's go ahead and do choose treatments, and let's add something here. 
we'll say that we did something over here as well. Okay. Now, both patients have medical history, right? We've got something on this pet that needs to be invoiced and quite a bit over here on this pet. It doesn't matter which patient that you're on. When you do the right click to go to post to create your invoice, it's going to grab both patients' medical history that needs to be invoiced so that you've got them both on the invoice together. Now, if you get to this screen and you're like, oh, we're not ready to invoice this particular pet yet, you can actually uncheck that patient and it only invoices one. But by default, it's going to grab both of them at one time. So I'm going to go ahead and click post. You'll have everything. Everything at this point will be normal. Um, you'll still put in the payment type as normal. Everything on the invoice will be divided out by patient. Um, but the whole process of taking the payment and printing the invoice, all of that should be the exact same. Only thing that's different is if you, you get to decide from that original posting window whether you want to just invoice for one of the patients or if you want to do both together. Now, do you guys ever let anybody charge on their account? Uh, yes, uh, we just had a question about care credit. Okay, do you guys have care credit um, service already? Yes. Okay, um, we'll just need you to contact technical support. Um, if you don't have their number, I can get it for you. Um, they'll have to they'll have to log in and make sure that you've got all your care credit files. They'll create your care credit payment type, and then all you guys should have to do is once they talk to you in your type drop down, down here at the bottom, you'll have a payment type for care credit. And you'll just click on that as the payment type and then everything else should be linked through to run through. But tech support will make sure you got all your files, they'll make sure all that's set and they'll, they'll give you a run through of how it works. So Sarah, it, if I remember correctly, the care credit button at the top, you do that to process the payment and then you put the payment in Avamark, right? That, that's correct. Yeah, you'll still have to process the payment through Care Credit, but as far as Avamark's concerned, all you have to do is select that as the payment type so that it recognizes that. Okay, hang on one second. So currently, when you process Care Credit, you have to go out to to the to Chrome. In Avamark, all you're going to do is, Sarah, would you please click on the Care Credit button? Yeah, hang on just a second. Let me. Look, I'm going to cancel out of this payment window, and real quick, just so you guys know. Whenever you're at a payment window, if you cancel out of it instead of actually putting in a payment type and all that, that is actually going to apply that as a balance on the customer's file because that's you saying that you're not taking a payment. So this $489 is going to show up in just a second. It is going to show up as a balance on their file that they still need to come in and pay for. So one of the nice okay. things about Avamark is that instead of having to get out of the software to process a care credit payment, all you have to do is, Sarah? Yes. Go click on it there. And it will automatically take you to care credit within the window, and you'll process it through here. Um, it depends upon our credit card machine. Uh, it may be that... The credit card machines will be able to read the card if they swipe it. Oh, our new ones that we'll be getting Yes, we have the new ones. They're packed away. We just haven't pulled them out yet. Okay. okay? Cool. Thank you, faster. Sarah. Way faster. You are very welcome. All right. Let me close out of there. Okay. Please. All right. Okay. So say that they wanted a, a preview printed preview of their invoice. How do we do that? Okay. What you can do, um, I would recommend doing it this way. So let's say that, let me go back over here. Um, let's say that we've got a couple things in medical history for this patient. So we're working on their record. Uh, maybe there was quite a bit going on. I'm just going to keep using dental because those are pretty good charges. Um, and there's quite a bit involved. So Let's say that this patient, we've been doing some dental services, we've got quite a bit in, but the customer at this point wants to know what their running total is, kind of what do they have going on at this point. What I would personally do 
is if you go up to the client area, so just make sure you're up in that client section, and then do a right click, you have a feature up here that's called a pre-invoice. It looks just like a regular invoice, but you haven't actually finalized and sent anything to accounting yet. So I'm just going to preview print it so you can see it. But it gives them their running total, and you can see there's a big watermark on it so they know it's not the final invoice. Okay. That's how I would prefer to do it. Otherwise, you have to actually send it to accounting, and you can't unpost once you've posted. So if they're just kind of wanting a preview or a running total, I would most definitely do it as a pre-invoice than any other way. Okay, so hang on a second, Sarah. So what that means is that if you go ahead and invoice it and do a preview and print it for them, then when you close out of there, and let's say we add a couple of extra charges and you go to finally check them out, their final invoice is only going to have the new charges on it and you will have a balance from the previous in invoice. So if you want to preview, if they want to preview the invoice, or if you're in an exam room and they ask you how much is this going to cost and you want to preview an invoice, this is the way to do it. Because if you do invoice it, if you hit the invoice button at the top, it's going to go ahead and send those charges to what she's calling accounting or invoice them and they're gone. You would have to go back and reprint the old invoice if they wanted an itemized receipt of everything that was done for that visit. Is that correct, Sarah? Yeah, once you've invoiced, you've invoiced. There is no uninvoicing. So you're basically going to have to, you can leave the invoice open and then go back and add to it, but you still are going to have things sitting there on that invoice waiting. So you're just kind of adding to it. So it's always best that if you're not 100% done and you're not finalized, I always do it as a pre-invoice because once you invoice, you can't go back. You're Say they come in the first day, they down the deposit, but every day, like that night, the next morning, people are adding it. That's kind of yes, scenario. that would be perfect. So, calls or stops by that afternoon to visit and says, Okay, well, what is my bill now? We can do the pre invoice. Say, Okay, from yesterday, now right? The protocol will be, and I, you and I have discussed this, that in a, in a multi day hospitalized patient, every day the doctor will call with a medical update, and then a technician will get on the phone with a financial update. And for the financial update, the easiest thing to do is the pre-invoice so that you can pull up all of the charges and say, okay, this is where we're at. It'll show your deposit, so on and so forth. And I believe, don't you have the ability to email a pre-invoice directly out of Avamark once I have the email? Um yeah, you should. Let me pull back open real quick, make sure they added that. Yeah, up here I said they should have added that button in here. This is a newer button they just added. But, yeah, you should be able to email that as well. So our goal will also be, as we move forward with invoicing also, is to give them the option, would you like a printed copy or would you prefer me to email it to you? And that way we can cut down on paper, we can save some for us, and make it much more easily available to the client. Not paper free, but we're making steps towards that direction. Yes, Jamie. Uh, I have another situation. Yes. Say um, they want to print, they want a uh, a receipt or an invoice, a printed invoice, a pass. Um, a pass visit, visit. Or say that they made a payment and they're like, and we asked, would you like a receipt or an email? I said neither. But then they're like, oh, you know what? I do want a printed one. How do I go back and print that? Okay, that's a great question. Um, if a customer ever needs a copy of an invoice or a recopy or they changed their mind and now they want a copy, um, any of those scenarios, what you'll do is every customer has an accounting window. Um, that accounting window is going to house every invoice, every payment, everything they've ever had that's went through accounting. And every customer's accounting is just this little dollar sign button by itself. So if you pop that open, that is going to show you every invoice and what was on those invoices. So if they need a reprint, let's say it's this top one here with all these dental procedures. All you have to do is uh, highlight on the invoice line itself 
So if it was this invoice here, just make sure you're on that actual invoice line. And then you're going to right click on it, and you have the option to reprint right here. That, that's going to pull it open just like it was that day, and you can either print it, print it, or email it from here. I like this already. <laughs> 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 if, if you're if you're in doubt, right click. Yeah, right click. Or yes, right click. Yes, you're spot on. I always tell all my clinics from the beginning of time. Um, I always tell them right clicking is going to be your best friend. I mean, I cannot hardly think of an area of the program that you can go to and right click and not find the option that you're looking for. Um, some other things while we're in this window. A couple other things that you guys might want to know, if you have a customer come to you, like especially around like tax time, if they come to you and say, hey, I need a copy of all of my accounting for the year, you can also get that from here. So you can print off individual invoices if they want them listed like that. Um, you just have to go to each invoice line and print them off. Um, or you can go up here to the top of the invoice window, or the accounting window rather, and click on print and history and then you specify how much of their accounting that you're wanting to print off that way if they're like a 10 year old customer you don't want to print off all 10 years just the past year i'm going to preview print it so you guys can see what it looks like but it looks almost identical to looking at the window itself it'll have each invoice what's on it um, and then it breaks down all their totals at the bottom as well Now, let's talk about real quick, because I know this is something that's going to come up, and I want to make sure you guys know how to handle it. Um, let's talk about a refund and how you're going to handle that. Let me put something in medical history real quick that would be like an inventory item that we would give money back on. Um, give me just a second. I'm going to go choose an item. Mm -hmm. Let's do... Actually, do we have any like shampoo in here? That's always a good example to use. We'll use that one. I don't even know if there's a price on it. Oh, there is. Perfect. All right. So we'll say that during the visit, the patient had all these dental procedures and they grabbed a bottle of shampoo spray. Let me invoice this. Customer pays and they go home. Let me post this out. They owe $976 because they had a balance from earlier. Okay, so customers paid for everything. They've left. They've went home. They've decided that either A, they, don't, they grabbed the wrong shampoo. They don't need this one. Um, they found it somewhere else. Whatever their reasoning may be. If they are bringing the product back and you're going to resell it, so if they're bringing the product back, they've not opened it, not used it, and you're going to put it back on your shelf, okay? Let me show you how you enter that back in so that it updates your on-hand quantity so that you can resell, and also how you give them their money back. So what you're going to do first is you have to put this product back in, but you put it back in as a negative amount. That way, Avamark increases the on-hand amount for you. So I'm just going to do a right-click, and I'm going to go to New instead of doing Choose, just because it's easier for a refund. That's going to pop open a new medical history window, and I can see right here that the code for the shampoo is 3188. So I'm going to key that in. That should link it up. And then all you have to do is put this in as a negative quantity because you're returning it. That should automatically place it in as a negative dollar amount as well, which we'll need. And then go ahead and click Done. All right, so returning product and you're reselling it, you're going to put it back into medical history as a negative amount. All right, then when you invoice it, so I'm going to go ahead and post this and invoice it. Okay. We're going to have to get to the payment window so that we can give them their money back. Remember to get to a payment window from here. 
you can do a right click new and I'm just going to give them cash back for it. You could run it back on a credit card if you need to. But you're going to do it as a negative dollar amount because you're giving them the money back. So pretty much everything is negatives when you're doing a return. And then done. And now there's a zero balance. We've given them their money back. You guys feel pretty good there? Yep. What about when you just oh. when it just credited back to their account? If that's the case and you're not putting it back on the shelf, so you you're basically skipping this stage right here. Um, there's a couple there's a couple different ways you could do it. Since there's nothing to invoice for, you know, I would probably go straight to their accounting window. So I would probably just click on their accounting window. And anywhere inside of here, do a right click and go to new. That pops open your payment window again. And then you would put it in here. Now, remember, if you put in a negative amount, so let's say I do negative 50. Okay. Um, you have to be careful because when you do that, well, shoot, that would be, hang on a sec, I got to think about this, because if they're doing just a return without, you're probably almost going to have to, sorry, I'm going to talk to myself for just a minute. You're probably going to have to put it in. Would you guys give them cash back? I guess it depends on how they're paying for it, correct? If they paid for it initially with a credit card or with cash? Correct. Okay. Because what I was thinking is, I mean, you could do it as an account adjustment and put it in that way, but if you need it to show up on your end-of-day reports as the correct payment type, which you would, there's nothing to invoice for. Let me think about this for a second. Are you asking we put it in as a keep a credit on the account? You would just put it in yeah. as and then close it out with no payment. Right, right. That's what I'm thinking. You'd almost have to do that and then leave it as a credit on their account. Um, now, if they have a credit on their account, <clears throat> right now we got a zero balance. But if they have a credit on their account, this right here, just so you guys know, is going to show up in green. So if you ever see a red number there, that means that they owe you money. But if it shows up in green, that means that they have a credit that you guys basically owe them money. Now, do you guys know how to print off your end of day deposit slip to balance out your cash short at the end of the day? On Avamark, no. Okay, I didn't know if she she mentioned that. Um, I figured she hadn't, but I just wanted to triple check. Um, when you need to print off your end of day deposit slip to, to kind of match out your money at the end of the day, you're going to go up here to the top and go to work with, and you have an option right here for reports. Now, obviously, there's going to be a lot of other reports in here. This is something we'll talk with the administrators on at a different time. But for you all to grab a deposit slip, all you have to do is set your day. Typically, it's going to be just for today's date, so you're not going to have to make a change here. But in case you have to, you can adjust the date here. But then you're going to click on the deposit slip and use this little single arrow over so that it pulls it over to the print side. I'm going to preview print it real quick so you can see it. But it should divide everything out. Here's all your cash payments. Here's all your credit card payments. Breaks down all of your totals and then gives you your total deposit amount at the bottom. Now, do you guys ever require somebody to lay down um, like a deposit on their file prior to surgeries or any major procedures? Yes. Okay. Um, all you would have to do in those scenarios is just open up their accounting window, so just the dollar sign on its own, and just anywhere inside of this window do a right click and go to new to get to your payment window. 
and then put in the payment that they're giving you. So if it's a $100 deposit, I'm going to put down 100 Again, you have to specify what type of deposit they're giving you. We'll say we're running it on a Visa card. Now, if it were me, this is just personal opinion, but this field right here is a typing field. So you select your type of payment. It duplicates it here, but it also gives you the ability to type here. So if it were me, I would probably make an adjustment here and say Visa, oops, got to type it right, and then put deposit for surgery or whatever it is. That way when you're looking back through their accounting, you'll know what that random payment is in there for. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and click done. Now, because whenever you lay down a deposit, because that customer doesn't owe a balance already and there's nothing, you know, to be invoiced for, it's going to automatically tell you, hey, they don't owe anything. You need to give them that $100 back. But remember, if you click continue, that's going to even it out and say that you gave them their money back. That's not what you want to do. Remember, if you click cancel, that is saying, no, you did not give them that money back, and it lays it down as a uh, credit on their account. So if I click cancel here, it'll ask you if they need a receipt, so you can say yes. It opens up an invoice window so you can print them off a copy of their deposit. I'm going to close out of it. But now they've got a negative $100, so they've got that credit on their account. Um, and you can see here's that Visa credit, and there's my note that I made on it that it's a deposit for surgery. Then when they come in and we actually put in their surgery and we invoice them, Whatever their total is, it's going to take that $100 off of it first. I'm trying to think of any other major. We know how to print off the invoices. We've been through different. Are there any other payment types that you guys need in that drop down? No. Other than care credit, which tech support will, will do for you. Um, but when you're in this window here, are there any other types of payment that you need listed, or do we have them all? I think we have them all. Okay. I was going to say, you can have up to 10 additional payment types if you need them. Um, we can get them added in, but if you've got what you need, then you should be good. And I think it's have right, guys. tables, right? Yes, system tables. Pretty much any drop-down list in Avamark that you want to edit your system tables houses almost all your drop-down list. So that's kind of your customized city in there. You can go in there and edit your allergy tables and your breeds, your colors, your payments, your rooms for your appointment calendar. I mean, pretty much anything that's got a drop-down list, you're going to go to system tables to edit those. Um, any other questions with the invoicing or accounting? We've got about 15 minutes left. I thought we would start on some estimates if you guys wanted to. Um, I'll kind of leave that up to you if you guys want to just stop with posting and invoicing or if you're comfortable with starting on estimates. We won't be able to finish it, but we could start it if you wanted to. Start estimates? Yes? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So like I said, just wanted to triple check with you guys, make sure you're okay with it. Um, all right, so with estimates, you've got two options. One, and this is what I would recommend that you guys do, you can preset your most common estimates and go ahead and have those um, stored in the system so that you don't have to create them from scratch each time. But you guys can also always hand create an estimate as needed as well. So you're going to have what's called canned estimates. That's going to be your preset list that you can go to any time and pull from. And then you're going to have what we call patient-specific estimates, which are the ones that you're creating from scratch um, as needed. But let's start with getting your canned list created, because it's going to save you guys a ton of time to get all of your most common estimates created and stored. So if you go up here to the top and go to work with, you have an option in here for estimates. This is your canned estimate list. Um, right now it's blank, um, but of course you guys, like I said, can store as many in here as you need. 
So let's say that I want to create and store an estimate for, I don't know, an annual visit that includes an exam and blood work and um, heartworm tests and all the common vaccines. So I could come in here on the name side and do a right click new. And basically all we're doing is giving the name of the estimate. I'm going to call this an annual visit. If it's a, you know, a lot of times you're going to have spay, neuter, um, your major dental procedures, all of those are going to be canned estimates that you have in here. All right, so now I've got my annual visit one created. So what I'm going to do is over here on the right hand side, I'm going to do a right click and go to choose and go through and pick all the procedures that I want to be stored on this estimate. So I'm going to go to my treatment list. And like I said, we're going to have an exam on there. So I'm going to type an exam there, and let's click on, oh, I saw it here. We'll use this physical office visit. All right, and then let's also put some blood work. I'm going to click on a couple things here. Um, let's do fecal test. Just do that one there, and then... Do heartworm canine. Okay. Like I said, all we're doing is just going through and selecting all the things that we want to pre store on this estimate. Okay. And then I just click done. So now at this point, I've got an annual visit estimate. It's got these five procedures already stored on it, and it's roughly 182.45. Now at this point, we could be completely done. I could click done, and we've got this saved estimate that I can pull from at any time. However, something that I would recommend um, as well, you don't have to take this step, but it, it is, um, it'll be beneficial to you guys in the long run. On any procedure that you think um, could vary, depending on the visit, how long it takes, et cetera, you can right click on any of these procedures in here and go to change. And you've got an option of setting variances on each of your line items on an estimate. You can say that the price of this particular entry could vary by a percent, could, could vary by a certain dollar amount, or it could vary by a specific quantity, which is really good um, if you've got like x-rays or something on an estimate and you could use one view, maybe two views, you could do a, a variance by quantity on there. Um, but the whole purpose of doing a variance is so that you're not dead set and locked into a certain price. So anytime that you add a variance to a line item, immediately when you go to print off an estimate, it's not going to say, hey, this estimate's going to be $182.45. It's going to say, hey, this estimate could be between $182.45 and $190.75. So basically, it gives you wiggle room in pricing for your estimates. So I could come in here and say, you know what, kind of depending on what we end up having to do for the visit, et cetera, I'm just going to say this could vary by 20% and then click OK. And like I said, you can do variances on any of your line items. Now, that's saved, that's done. I'm going to go ahead and click done in here. Now, when I have a patient that comes in and I need to give them that estimate and print it off for them, every patient, when you're looking at their main file here, every patient has an estimate tab. I can click on that, and then from within this tab, I'm going to do my right click, and I'm going to go to choose. That will open up your canned estimate list with all of your saved estimates that you've already created. So then I'm just going to click on the estimate that I want, obviously this one because we have no others at this point, and then click done. And then that's going to attach that estimate to that patient. So now, if I wanted to, I could double click on this to open it. And now I can make any changes. I've pulled in the bulk template of the saved one so I don't have to create it from scratch. But if this particular patient doesn't need the blood work or they also need a vaccine while they're here, I can either take this estimate and remove something from it 
right-click remove, or I could right-click choose and pull anything else in that I need. But because this estimate does have a variance on it, now you can see at the bottom of this, once I've given it to a patient, it gives me that price range. So again, you're not dead set locked into 182. You've got a little bit of a price range that you can flow between. You also have the ability of setting an expiration date on these. Um, I would recommend that you do. Most commonly, um, I see 30 days or 60 days. Kind of depends on the procedure. But when you're ready to print this, all you have to do is click print. It will know to print the estimate document. Now, the estimate document is a document that we send you guys. So it comes with the Avamark program. It's just a document in Microsoft Word that we've already kind of preset and created for you. Um, however, once I pull this open, if you guys are like, oh, we hate that, that's not how we would word it, it is perfectly fine. You guys are more than welcome to open that estimate document in Word, make any adjustments to it that you want, and save it. And then you can use it as is, you know, with your changes on it. So I'm going to preview print this so you guys can kind of see what it would look like. So here's just kind of a sample of the estimate itself. Like I said, it's going to pull in uh, the wording that we had on it. Um, it pulls in the procedures, what the charges are on those, and then you can see your total here may vary between the dollar amounts that we had. Let me go ahead and close out of there. Now, let's say that I printed that off, I gave it to the customer. Now, at this point, let's say that they look at it and they say, yes, absolutely. Everything that's on that estimate, that's what we're going to do. That's what we need. Let's go for it. Um, you've got a couple different options. One, probably the quickest and easiest thing that you could do is if you right-click on this estimate from the Estimate tab, you've got the option to post. What that would do is take everything from that estimate and place it into the patient's medical history in blue. So I'm going to go ahead and do it so you guys can see what it looks like. Let's just go ahead and post it. It'll say, are you sure you want to post this estimate? I'm going to say yes. Now, everything that was on that estimate is now fulfilled, and it's sitting in the patient's medical history in blue so that we can invoice for it when we're ready. Now, I'm going to go ahead and choose that estimate again so we've got it back on there. Another option that you have is let's say we printed that off and gave it to the customer and they said, ooh, you know what, no, um, we feel like that's too expensive or we don't think it's necessary to do all that. Basically, they're declining it. I would, if it were me, right click on this and then go to decline. What that'll do is takes everything from that estimate and places it in medical history. Sorry, it's just yelling at me because I got duplicates, but that's okay. Usually you're not posting the same estimate twice on the same pad. Um, but it'll place all of those estimate line items in as declined entries so that you've got record of it. And something else that I love, um, I don't know how often you guys would have to use this, but it's there in case you need to. But at any time, you can go to a patient's estimate tab and do a right click. And there's an option in here called Show Ghost. And that shows you all past estimates for this pet and dates, and it tells you whether they kept them or declined them. Technician for a feline nail trim, any available kennel technician for a feline nail trim. So it's just a really quick, easy way to grab that past history on an estimate for a patient. And then you can right click and uncheck show ghosts and it'll take them off of there. Now, if you guys want to create your own estimate from scratch, um, it's not already a pre-saved estimate that you're pulling from. You've just got an emergency walk-in, and you need to quickly create an estimate for this customer. Instead of going to the Estimate tab and doing a right-click Choose and picking from one of the saved estimates that you've got, you're going to come here and do a right-click New. And you're just going to create the whole thing from scratch. You're going to give it a name. You're going to assign a doctor to it. 
You do not have to worry about putting a document in because remember when you go to print it, it already knows to print the estimate document. But you can give an expiration date. I could go ahead and say 30 days or in this case it's an emergency, I'd probably just put like three days there. All right, once you've given it a name, you've got your doctor uh, listed, you're going to click OK. And that's going to open up the bottom section so that you can do a right click choose and go through and pick everything that you want on this estimate. So we're going to do um, some x-rays. Um, I don't know which one to use. And any, are any of those what you guys would use for a standard x-ray? Or do I need to type in something different? It's lab. Type in, it's not lab, it's x-ray. Oh, gotcha. With a hyphen. Uh, Gotcha. There we go. Okay. So we'll just say. Um, the last one. Oh, okay. We'll use that one there. Let me remove this one. Okay. So we'll say we've got x rays. We're going to have an emergency exam. If we've got an emergency exam fee, um, et cetera. So we're just picking everything we want on this estimate, done, and then everything else works the exact same. We can add variances to these by right clicking and change. We can add variances to the line items. It works the exact same so that it gives us a price range. Um, you print it off the same, you post it, decline it the same. It's just that we've created it from scratch versus pulling in a saved one. All right, any questions with your estimates? How are you guys feeling there? Feel pretty good? Yep. Good. That's what we'd like to hear. Sarah, it's time we got to bring this to the end. Yeah, I think we're running out of time now. So, um, well, we've got you scheduled for your next one. That is, let me triple check with you real quick. Make sure we got it right. We should. Tomorrow. Yep, we got you scheduled down for tomorrow. And I believe it's doing the exact same thing with a second group, correct? Should be, yes. Okay. Perfect. Well, we'll just...